Hard power versus soft power. Power can be applied directly or it can be applied indirectly. The direct application of power is hard power. The indirect application of power is soft power. Some sources of power are more suited for hard power, while other sources of power are more suited for soft power. Hard power is power directly applied through force, authority, or direct economic incentive. A commander who wishes to use military forces to defeat an enemy would mostly use hard power to do so. The force of military action would come from several sources of power. The wealth in weapons, equipment, and supplies of the commander's forces, the knowledge and skills of the commander and the commander's forces to wage war, the bodies of the commander and the commander's forces themselves that are taking forceful action, the minds of the commander and the commander's officers to process, analyze, and use relevant military intelligence, and to plan, direct, and execute military action, and the spirit of these warriors to persevere through the fight until victory has been achieved. The authority to carry out military action will come from the social influence of the commander, and this authority is needed to command and coordinate the military forces to achieve victory. Direct economic incentive is also applied to pay for the services of the military forces, and this comes from the source of power that is wealth. Six of the seven sources of power are used for the commander to apply hard power to defeat an enemy. Five were used for force, one for authority, and one that is used for force is also used for direct economic incentive. Of course, there is also an element of soft power for the commander to more effectively achieve victory. The beauty of the commander's leadership, through the person and charisma of the commander, can have an inspiring effect on the warriors to give their best for their leader. This effect is also linked to social influence. Instead of the direct application of social influence through authority, it is instead an indirect application of social influence through charisma and inspiring leadership. The beauty of the uniforms or attire of the military forces can also inspire pride, solidarity, and group loyalty, and boost morale. In this case, beauty and social influence are sources of power used for soft power. However, it is clear that more hard power is used than soft power for the commander to defeat the enemy, although both applications of power are important. Soft power is power applied through attraction and persuasion. It is aptly exemplified by the archetype of the femme fatale, often found in art, literature, and history. The femme fatale is a woman who uses her feminine beauty, charm, and allure to enchant a man and seduce him into achieving her agenda, often at the risk, disadvantage, or downfall of the man. This power to attract and persuade a man to carry out her will draws on several sources of power. The beauty of the woman to attract a man, the social influence of the woman on the man, the knowledge and skills of seduction the woman has, the body of the woman that makes up her beauty and feminine allure, the mind of the woman to plan and implement her execution of this power, and the spirit of the woman to actually exercise this power. It should be added that the beauty of the woman is not necessarily only the beauty of her person, but also her clothes, accessories, perfume, cosmetics, and other possessions, which would mean that wealth in these possessions can also serve as a source of power. However, it is not necessary for a woman to wear clothes, carry accessories, apply perfume, put on cosmetics, or use other possessions to attract the man. So wealth in these possessions is not always a source of power for the femme fatale, although it usually is. The woman also doesn't even have to own these possessions, as she can borrow them from her friends or family or anyone willing to lend them. A famous example of the femme fatale is Queen Cleopatra VII of Egypt. Although Cleopatra became queen after her father, the pharaoh of Egypt, died, she had to share power with her brother, Ptolemy XIII, as well as contend with the demands of other siblings. Cleopatra and Ptolemy struggled for power against each other, resulting in a civil war. 
Ptolemy had the upper hand until the arrival of Julius Caesar and the Roman army. Cleopatra went to meet Caesar in person, and had a relationship with him that produced a son, Caesarian. Cleopatra's influence over Caesar led him to help her gain power over her brother Ptolemy. Caesar defeated Ptolemy in the Battle of the Nile in 47 BC, where Ptolemy died, consolidating Cleopatra's power. Years later, after Caesar died, ancient Rome fell into civil war. Cleopatra began a relationship with Mark Antony, one of the most powerful Roman leaders during that time, and had children with him. Mark Antony helped her gain even more land and power in the eastern Mediterranean, even though this undermined his authority and popularity among the Romans. Mark Antony's rival, Octavian, used this as propaganda, accusing Antony of betraying Roman lands and power to his lover Cleopatra. Octavian defeated Mark Antony at the Battle of Actium in 31 BC. Antony and Cleopatra committed suicide following their defeat, but the story of Cleopatra still fascinates many as a prime example of the femme fatale, a woman who seduced two of the most powerful men of the time and led them to help her gain greater wealth and power. Octavian put an end to this and became known as the first Roman Emperor, adopting the title Augustus. Hard power and soft power can both be effective in carrying out the will of whoever wields them. However, hard power is superior, as the wielder of hard power has greater control over it and its application. Soft power, on the other hand, depends more on the whims of others and offers less control than hard power. Of the sources of power, wealth is more predominantly suited for hard power, as it can be used as direct economic incentive as well as the means to apply force and to gain or maintain authority. Beauty is more predominantly suited for soft power, as it is used to attract and persuade. Social influence in the form of authority is more suited for hard power, while social influence in the form of relationships is more suited for soft power. Knowledge and skills are used for both, as greater knowledge or skill in whatever one does helps in both applications of power. The body, mind, and spirit are all necessary for hard power as well as soft power, as all three are needed to exercise power in the first place.